Hey guys, welcome to the Creative Arena. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a smooth perspective section transition effect on Screw Trigger with GSAP and Linux using the Elementor page builder. Mind you, if you're using the Elementor free version or the paid version, you can achieve this easily and I'm going to walk you step by step. And it is also responsive on all devices. And get this, I'm also going to show you how to turn it on and off on mobile and tablet devices should you not want it to take effect on those devices so at the end of this tutorial this is what we're going to create so now when you scroll you get to this point you can see and then you now have this perspective transition to the next section like that the next section comes in like that and then the next section like this okay and then you now have the end section you scroll back up you have them coming in like that as you can see the next one comes in like that and we can also check for the responsiveness check it out on tablet this is what we have on tablet so now when we scroll you can see it takes place on tablet as well smoothly okay so let's check it out on our mobile devices okay so now we'll come over here Okay, as you can see, it's loading up. Now on our mobile devices, what we get, you can see, it's working pretty well on the mobile device as well. Okay, so without further delay, let's dive in and get started. In our Elementor editing screen, I've taken the time out to create the structure for our design in order not to make this video pretty long. I did a basic design and I'm going to walk you through everything I've done here. So you can see here, this is the design I've done. This is the start section here and where you scroll, you have this section here and then you have this section here. Not to worry about how it looks like this uh, when you check it on the live page, right? it's arranged on the live website. I don't know how or why it's displayed like this so now when you come over here you can see this is another section here section three section four section five and then the end section okay so now i'm gonna come back here and then i'll just show you pretty pretty much what i did so you can see here this first container here this one is our start section container which is set to uh minimal height vh100 and then just a basic text here to, to indicate that this is the start section for scrolling okay and then this here is our parent container this container here and you can see it is set to vh100 direction is set to column horizontal and then the color background is set to this and you go to the advanced settings nothing is added here that's basically what it's there so now after, within this parent container we now have this pinned container now this pin container is a container that you make once the first one you make you duplicate it okay so now in this pin container first off you come over to the layout you see that it is set to 100 percent and the content width is set to full width make sure you set that okay and then the, no other setting is done here you come over to the style option nothing is actually done there you come over to the advanced settings nothing is done here however what is going to happen here is we're going to add a CSS class here according to the title. So I titled this for reference purposes. You can title it whatever you want, but this is for reference purposes. So for this pin container here, this CSS class we're going to add here is the pin pin CSS class like this. So I'm just going to copy this out because we're going to apply it all to the remaining four cards, four containers that we have here. Okay. So now when you open up the pin card pin container you can see there is a content container now this content container here it may vary depending on what you are designing okay so now for the case of this this content container now houses other elements other containers heading and structure like this here you can see this one event and this here this text and this text this you can find them all here and then this image here you can see this is the image here so that is how i was able to just design it so in your case you can design it however you want but make sure Whatever you are designing here should be within a container called your content container or however you've named it. It should just be within it. Now, I can delete all this here, all this effect here, and then just add only an image here. So now under this content container here, you can come over here to the layout and you can see here we set it minimal height to 100. 
direction is set to row horizontal. Nothing else is done here. We'll go to the style option. Now you can see the background color is set to this color here that we can see. And then we'll come over here to the border radius. And we'll now have a border radius of 20 pixels all around, which you can see like this. Okay. Yep. And then you now go over to the advanced settings. Now under the advanced settings, you can see the padding we have here. 50 pixel all around for the padding. Now we'll come over to the CSS class. Now for the CSS class for this content here, we're going to add a CSS class. I'm going to go to my code editor. These are the various CSS class we'll be using. So the next CSS class we're going to use is the my effect class. So I'm just going to come over here and I'll type it my effect. Okay, so now this is it. For the pin card or pin container, sorry, it's going to be pinned CSS class and therefore all content container you're going to use my effect so that is just all you just need to do so I'm going to come over here to this container here come to the advanced settings for the CSS class so I'm just going to add this pinned come over here for the container within it this content container come down here to the CSS class and I'm going to add my effect so I'm going to repeat the process here for the next one come over here give it CSS class pinned then the content container within this pin class I'm just going to come over here to the advanced settings and give you the CSS class, my effect. Then come over to the next one, pinned, and then give you the CSS class pin. The content container that is within this pin card, you go to the advanced settings and give you the CSS class, my effect. Now, you're going to come over here to this last container here. You can see it's written last pinned last pin so now what you're going to do here is you're going to come over here to the advanced settings for the last pin and then you're going to set the css class to be last hyphen pin okay now the reason for this is there is an effect that is applied to the last card you always do this for the last section the last section you must add this last pin container last pin css class okay and then you come over over here to the content within it and then you go to the advanced settings and come over here and then you add my effects to it. Okay. So now we are done adding the various CSS classes. So you can see there is a last container here. This container is our end section container, as you can see. So nothing pretty uh, is happening here. So all you just need to do now is for us to add our code. So to do so, we're just going to come over to the add element and search for the HTML tag. And then I'm just going to drag it and drop it below here, this end section container within it so i'm going to head over to my code editor now this is the code that we're using now this is a uh, gsub code and the scroll trigger plugin that we're using here and i'll explain some part of the code for you shortly on how you can go about tweaking it on you and use it on your own uh, project okay so i'm just going to copy the code real quick okay now i'm just going to come over here now before i paste the code let's come over here let's publish this and then now let's preview it. So we can see here when you scroll, nothing really happens. You can see this is what I was telling you about this. Yeah, it's now showing clearly. You can see you scroll, you have it all just mama like this. Okay. And that is it. Okay. So now I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to paste my code here. All right. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click on publish. And then I'm going to come back here. You can see it has refreshed. We can still refresh it. And then when we scroll, we're going to see that our effect take place. You can see this wonderful effect like that. Perspective, section, transition. And you can see for the last card, the last card did not perform that particular effect, as you can see. Okay. So now you now scroll to the end section like that. And mind you, this effect is responsive on all devices. However, I've also taken the time out to add another line of code, which I will explain to you in a situation where, but you do not like how it display on your mobile or your tablet, you can just turn it off on those devices easily by just commenting a single line of code out. Okay, so now let's check it out on our live website and see how it looks like. Okay, so this is a live website. Now we can refresh this out here. As you can see, there is no more WordPress uh, top menu here, just a plain website. This is what your visitor will see. So now we'll scroll. This is what we're gonna have. You can see the wonderful transition section to the next section like that as you can see and the finder card just comes and go to the next section now when you go back up you have your card coming in like that okay 
Now, this is responsible on all devices. We can check it out on tablet and see how this effect works on tablet. Okay, so now we scroll and see. It looks pretty on tablet. As you can see, now let's check it out on mobile. Let's see how it works on mobile. So now we scroll. We can see our effect taking place. You can see. Okay. So in a situation where you do not like how it works on your mobile device, or you just want to turn off it, turn it off on your mobile device, so it works only on your desktop. Like I said earlier, I'm going to show you how you're going to do that. So now let's go back to our code and then I'll show you what to do. All right. So in the code, we'll come over here. Let's, let me just expand this a little. And then we'll come down here. Now you're gonna see this section here where it says to end to disable animation on mobile and tablet. Simply comment out this line below. So now this is the line of code. All you just need to do is just copy this code here. And if you're using Windows, you just press Control forward slash and it's gonna comment it out. Or you use command forward slash if you're using uh um ample. So now once you have it like this and you publish it, now we return back to preview your website, you realize that this, our animation doesn't take place on tablet and on mobile. And we can check that out and see. All right, so we're here on our live website, as you can see on our desktop, you can see our effect is working fine on our desktop. We can see the transition going smooth on our desktop, okay? Now let's check it out on tablet and let's see. Let's come over to tablet. Now on tablet, let's scroll and let's see. We you see now that the effect is no longer taking place on tablet. You just have this happening. Just normal scroll. Okay, let's check it out on mobile. And then you scroll, you have everything just going smoothly on mobile, no effect taking place. So that's how you can turn it off and turn it on on your code. Okay. So that's pretty much it about this tutorial. If you've learned something new from this tutorial, remember to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to our channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified first when I drop a new video. And feel free to drop a comment wherever you're confused or have any suggestion or question. I'll do it to attend to as much as I can. But until then, see you on our next video. For now, bye-bye.